<laughs> Sub Shredders, my name is Logan, aka Spider Hands, and welcome to ESPN's Views for the 34th installment. Where, if I am not mispronouncing the name, and I'm sure I'm going to get absolutely flamed in a moment for it, Anthony Rodriguez. And if we switch over to here, we have the man on the screen. Feel free to introduce yourself. What's up, guys? Um, happy to be on Logan, Logan's channel. My name is Anthony Rodriguez. I am a music composer located in the state of New Jersey, in the United States of America, right across New York City. And um, it's good to be here. It's good to know. And what do you what do you do? What do you specialize in? Because you wear a few hats. The, the the hats are worn depending on the situation. So sometimes, like I have a piano program that I run um, on a weekly basis since two thousand eight. I've mentored hundreds of students privately, and as many know, education is a, a good sell. You know, we can sell education, and that's a good way to. Um, you know, um, make a living and, um, and just, you know, like any other business, it goes up and down. So you just have to deal with the good and the bad of being self-employed, you know? Um, and, and then on the, on the mix, I also perform with artists. So I, I am a musician for hire as well, um, as a piano player. So I play wherever, wherever the, the green is. <laughs> wherever the money is i go and um i barely do jam sessions i really don't do jam sessions i'm a family guy so three kids so everything that i do kind of has to be monetized you know in, in some way shape or form whether it's not whether it's not uh, whether it's money or some type of agreement or, or anything so i have to make sure that everything i do is super productive and then aside from that i work here in the studio since COVID came and made its way to our land, um, I'm sure like many other producers, they upgraded their studios and they they changed their setup to work from home. So my setup was very simple before COVID. And since COVID hit, I made a few changes in my musical works and I really invested in collaborating more um, in studio opposed to live on stage or anything like that. So the, the hats that I wear are basically, you know, in the music industry. And um, whenever it's needed, I'll wear, I'll wear my hat backwards to the side, <laughs> front, you know, and, and occasional I'll wear some, um, some glass, sunglasses. Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah um because when did you start wearing hats like what age did you get into music and how did, how did it all begin oh my parents were involved in in um in church and music ministry in in the um, in our church here in new jersey and um i was always around the band and um so you know it, in christian music religious music you know um that's where i kind of started and in which you know it's a good and bad thing because what we call secular music you know secular music for for christian people is basically music that's not related to to god so they call that secular music i didn't get exposed to secular music until later in my life um and so you know i remember having a um, uh, one of those black radios with a cassette deck and I would you know listen to radio stations and I would record the radio station and as a kid I would kind of remember the pattern because you know they would play the hit songs every hour you know and I remember to this day um, even now in the radio we have songs that are that are like super popular and when I walk in the mall and I hear it, it, re it, re it really brings me back to that childhood when I snuck away from my parents to hear secular music. Hmm. Um, so it, I'm a late bloomer in secular music, you know. So um, now, you know, even when I play in corporate events, so when people ask me, hey, let's play this song from the 80s. Um, if we have sheet music, I'll, you know, we can do it. But to play it by ear, uh, I don't know about that. So... It's so, you know, it started at a young age, but, you know, like we, like we know melody is melody and music is just a universal language. So, hmm. but yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. And, and do you like play like a, a range of instruments? Like what kind of instruments do you play? 
piano is my main instrument. Mm-hmm. Um, I love I love to play the bass guitar. I love to play percussion and drums, in which you know my start in in playing and and starting out in in the church it was as as a drummer. So playing the drums and going into percussion. Since we were um, a Latin church, the the elements were a bit of Latin feel and a little bit of um, I don't know what other elements I can say, but the typical drum beat for a fast paced song and having some elements, um, having percussion, you will, you know, I would be able to play the cowbell and just, you know, make noise. So, but piano was like the, the thing that kind of, you know, between percussion and piano, but I, 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 I got stuck on the piano from, from the age of 15, 16, you know, never stopped and like how important is it to learn the piano when you're a musician as a composer you know doing that kind of stuff how important is it to know an instrument like that man if you start off as a piano player like just piano without without the 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 goal of trying to be a producer or anything and later wanting to be a producer a lot of things will come easy to you because you know the the piano really represents everything you know, you can you can do a bass line on the low side. You can do a melody on the middle side, to the high side, to the low side. Um, chord progressions, voicings, all of that beautiful stuff can really, um, as a piano player, can really get you started. Opposed to somebody that doesn't know nothing about piano, hmm. and and, um, and you could get you know ahead of the game. So me being a a player, um, I started arranging ballet music slow music at a young age and a lot of things were common sense to me um so a lot of the things were played by ear as well so since i love to play the bass and i love to play the drums and the percussion i already understood how to do it on the piano with four fingers you know what i mean <laughs> so from the drums you're doing you're working with two sticks on the piano you're doing four fingers the bass the bass drum the snare drum and the hi-hat and um so it, it, throughout the years things you know um i became a better ranger and it, it and, and you know leading up to today but it all started as a regular piano player playing basic songs how how did you avoid the you because you, you talked about the bass the drums and the piano right and i know that you've also got yeah. synths and other stuff that you work with you never tried the guitar i'm not I, i'm not a guitar player <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, I did learn a few chords from friends in the last few years, and I've actually helped. I helped the church one day, and I grabbed the guitar, not knowing like shortcuts or inversions on the guitar, and I was just playing bar chords. And by the time I was done, I was I held the guitar like this, and then I ended up for some reason I ended up all the way to my left like that trying to keep this hand from falling apart because it, <laughs> it just started hurting right here <laughs> and i and i told everybody that's the reason why i don't play guitar you know but i do have an immense respect like an enormous love for people that do play the guitar i think that guitar has a um a feel that you can't do on the piano and that's another reason why when I do arrangements and people want guitars, I always aim for getting a live guitar player. I do not like sample. I don't like sample um, guitars. And that goes for brass, like for trumpets and stuff like that. I don't like, um, you know, guitar more. I, it's, I'm very picky with guitars. So I suppose my next question is, given the increase in technology and the capabilities we have to just do what we want with all these MIDI and synth instruments and stuff like that, how important is it to retain a sense of humanity in your performances and arrangements? Uh, um, you know, and a, a lot of a lot of people, well, the people that that are on the blockbuster level, they would always say to try to incorporate one live thing in their music. You know, whether it be one violin for something that's a, sym- a symphony. <laughs> so, you know, if you're if you're composing like sixty violins, um, cellis and um, celli and, and violas and whatever horn, um, French horns, try to incorporate one real brass player, one, just one, of each section. You know, which is cost 
it's a cost efficient for the for the executive producer hmm. and have a little bit of a live element so uh, i try to do that and um a lot a lot of the soundtracks that i that i compose i don't really need to do that because i use a lot of the um uh sample libraries that have the the reverbs and all that stuff and then the third party reverbs that i have here the gear that i have to really amp up the sound it's not really like a closed mic type of recording where mm -hmm. you know so if i ever need to do like a sound where it's a close like in like a like a solo violin um typically there's there's good sound libraries for that but again guitars i do not gamble with that so i need to get a real guitar player there so, yeah um because you've actually who, who have you who have you collaborated with over the years who are some of your favorite uh musicians to sort of jam with and record with for the last two years it wouldn't be musicians well it would be one musician a percussionist from colombia his name is um caliche he was the one that did the percussion for both deliver us and the plagues oh. um, mm. very very talented guy very um he was like re really exploring what type of rhythms to put in these in these sound in these um soundtracks because they weren't typical salsa music. Um, but majority would would be um studio engineers. So I had the pleasure of working with um, a mastering engineer John Weber. He is a mastering engineer at Air Studios in 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 London. Um, he worked on Deliver Us. Um, a friend of mine from, from L.A., his name is Luke Pimentel. He's also another mastering engineer. Um, and a mixing engineer, Jake Jackson. He's also from London, from Air Studios. Um, I'm really a fan of audio engineers more than, than musicians. Like, I wouldn't get wild with musicians. Like, just because of, the, of where we are today um you know there isn't a budget like to hire musicians to come in all the time so i think that the 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 plugins that are out today to help composers like me and other people that make music really come from engineers audio engineers that partner up with these companies to help us boost up our arrangements you know whether it be in mixing whether it be um, adding a boost to an instrument, how to pan, um, different gear that they have um, to to make things sound bigger, mm. you know. Um, so I'm a huge fan of audio engineers. Like, I I just watch endless hours of interviews. <laughs> you know, which is good. It's it's good to do that because you know a lot of these people that are getting interviewed and are getting older. To be fair, a lot of them engineers that worked for like the seventies and eighties and worked with these big bands. It's it's kind of just wild that you can get access to them now because I don't, I just don't feel like you had the same level of access that you did before we had the internet and YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, man. I I speak to young composers, younger kids, you know, um, that are coming up. Um, and whether they're doing hip hop or whatever, I'm like, listen, you know, listen to audio engineers because they're the ones that record the music. Mm. You know what I mean? They're the ones that tweak the stuff. So whatever comes out, learn what the product does and what it can do for, you know, for your music. Learn about EQ, the, the, the basics of EQ, learn the basics of panning, learn the basics of using, you know, um, a stereo imager to see how your stuff is going, you know, and and all of these other things um you know i've invested in a load of plugins like you know universal audio mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the simple fact that i my my best friend is is an audio engineer and i've seen him working since pro tools like the single digits pro tools like pro tools 5 or something like that and i've seen him with his gear like we used to use um adats um and he had gear like and I, you know, I was never interested in that, but I saw him work. So me being a a producer and all that stuff, I already see that. And I'm like, whoa, they have plugins for this. They have plugins for that. I'm going to get it. So, uh, so I, you know, I have plug, I work with plug Alliance. I work with universal audio. I have waves. 
and you know little things and little things here and there that i see um these iconic sound engineers use hmm. and like you said youtube shows it all and these guys <laughs> are not afraid to show what they use to uh mix their music yeah which is the best thing in the world but because the irony is, is that they don't need to really show you that avoid showing you stuff because at the end of the day you could give an inexperienced audio engineer those tools and they wouldn't necessarily know what to do with it in the first place right right yeah and I, I'm, I'm just you know it's a, it's a great time to um be a musician you know with the technology that's out there um i can tell you you know no room is perfect um so when i do have to mix i usually have um software for that so um you know have you ever heard of um slate audio VSX. Oh, dude, I have all those plugins, man. I love them the pieces. You had the VSX? Except that one. I have like the Slate Digital Passes and stuff like that. I've had a look oh, at their VM1 okay. headphones and stuff like that. I've gone close to it, but can you tell me more about it to see if you can convince me to give it a try? Okay, well, this is the, the only thing you need to know is if you need to mix a, a soundtrack and you're not, if, if you don't consider yourself a mixer, you need all the help you can get to make decisions with frequencies. Mm. Okay. So um, the VSX, what it does is it, it comes with the headphone apart from the software. So you have about, you have a lot of rooms and now they've added another room. You have headphones also expensive headphone models. You have cars, SUV, you have a club. So if you're, you know, a producer that does club music or anything that's played in the club, ah, you can have a good sense. Hmm. You will have a good sense of how deep the bass is or how high or the mids and everything. So I use it more for the frequencies because I am afraid of frequencies. I, I'm scared. You know what I mean? So I put it on and I, and I you know, I have a 2.5 system here. I have, the, I have the stereo and I have the sub in the bottom. So when I finish with the when I finish with the VSX, I switch it to the you know to the to the house speakers, and see how it sounds. And I'm happy. You know, of course. Um, I even yeah. Sometimes I do the other way around just to experiment. I do not trust my room, so my my speakers are Quested speakers, and they're one of the best. But it's my room against my speakers. So if I'm if I'm if I need to do like a precise mix to deliver to someone, I'm not I'm not gonna trust my room, even though it's it's treated you know better than than what it would be without it. I mm. still don't trust it, so that's why I invested in the VSX because you can't go wrong with that. It's perfect, man. It's 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 perfect. It's you know, and the good thing about it is for those that don't have the lump sum. And this is not a plug. I'm not ever advertising mm. them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but for musicians like myself that always have a budget, you know, whether if you don't have a budget and you really want to get into the mixing and you don't have a perfect room, they do have monthly. You could pay rent to pay, rent to own, which is something that a lot of people should know. You know, it, it's a great investment, Logan. I, I can tell you right now, I'm not a mixer. But I've released many soundtracks through the year. I had I had plenty of soundtracks signed to publishers. And I would say, hey, do you want me to send it to you without mix? But no, leave it like that. Don't touch it. I'm like, okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> nice. Because so. while I would love to sit and chat about more production stuff, I should probably ask you about this, the work you've done. <laughs> so, like, you talked oh, about sound... <laughs> i mean i could talk about what gear we if we want to do gear man <laughs> we will part two some other day <laughs> yeah absolutely i'd be I'd, I'd genuinely be down for that but you've what you're an award-winning um you're an award-winning composer aren't you, you did the tally award or something like that yeah that's, it's a great story man um for some reason i never get the news like on time so the tally award situation i found out many years after the event and that was a 2004 2005 um production and so i i lost connection with the producer 
um, and I worked on majority of the music with him. Um, <clears throat> and so years later, um, I decided to Google the film because I wanted to get like a hard copy. And then I found out through the descriptions of the video, I'm like, oh, tell you award, cable, cable this, cable that, BT. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. So then I went to the I, I went to the IMDB page. Did I say it right? I mm -hmm. <laughs> page. And I searched the film and my name wasn't there. I'm like, oh wow. So this guy just took all the credit. That's oh. so I so I had it I, I had it changed. Um I had my name implemented there and so it's all good now. I was trying to get a statue, but they were like, listen, man, this this is from a 2005, 2004, 2005. So we actually need like the participant number. And I'm like, well, for me to contact that guy right now, just to just to get the number, I don't think it's right. So I'll just wait sometime. I'll wait in the future whenever we reconnect um, and I'll throw it in there. Like, hey, man, what's the what's the what's the participant <laughs> number? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm I'm. You know, overall, I'm just happy that it that it that it got to that level, and it's actually part of my my career. So you can't, you know, I'm I'm definitely not a person to let someone steal a credit from me. You know, I I would definitely let people know, I'm like, hey, you know, I also worked on this, so I, you know, mm. it's all good. Because like obviously, you didn't let that stop you. You've been involved in other stuff, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, a lot of uh modern recordings like with artists and um, collaborations with um, other musicians and stuff like that. It, it, I don't let that, you know, like I said, you know, I found out years later, I was doing a bunch of stuff already, um, hmm. but it was a good thing to add in my biography and, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, I was going to ask about the writing room productions. Right here. You see it. I don't know if you can see it on my other camera. My, my phone is back there somewhere, but yeah. So this is the writing room production. This is the the um, upgrade from what I had before. So before I had my 2009, 2009 Mac. It's an early 2009 iMac. <laughs> um, using a crack version of Logic. Hey! So I could, <laughs> Yay! I could, I, could, I could upgrade to nothing, man. I, it was very, very depressing. Um, but it was, it was, it was a mental thing. I really didn't care. Like I, it, it was like, I really didn't care. I was able to record stuff. I was able to, to write arrangements and send them out. So, but I couldn't get pro tools in there for sure. You know, I think, I think right now it's in a copy tongue version, Mac OS, and that's barely holding it. I have it here as a as a research computer and even with that safari is already <laughs> safari is already done so I, I don't know what i want to do with that computer <laughs> safari said hey man these new websites i can't handle it i believe i have firefox on oh if firefox get duck duck go on it or something like that you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's, it's there, man. It's it's there. But um, I had um KRKs, the Rockets, um, beautiful speakers for for like great speakers, man. I actually deliver us was done in two thousand twenty. I still have my Rockets at that for that record. That that record was produced with Rocket speakers, the KRKs, before sending it out to um London. Um, so. I, I love those speakers. I I've sold I sold them because I upgraded. But um I would I would get them back in a heartbeat to do at least at least like a, a surround the left or surround, you know, to get like a quad setup in the back. Yeah. Um but I you know, I don't like talking bad about no speakers, no gear. They are great speakers. Okay. And um even though people, you know, with the questits that I have here. Oh, you can't compare them, you know, but they, they did phena a phenomenal job for me for many years. And, um, you know, and they're great. I, I, I highly recommend it for, for any, to anyone. Of course, it's bassy, you know, it has its bass, you know, but people learn their speakers, man. 
I mean, like, is it more important for speakers to have a set character so you know what you're going to get every time, or is it more important for them to be neutral in their frequency response? I, it could be, it could be either or, man. It it the most important thing is to reference music. So um, when you when you put music on that you're trying to to get close to, you can hear how it sounds on your speakers. But then again, the room is also uh, an important factor. So that had have I had the opportunity to hear my rockets to the to its fullest potential i gotta say no because i used it in a room so i if i you know and i i logan i could tell you with any amount of money that a good treated room close to perfection with affordable speakers you know is worth more than expensive speakers mm. in in a non-treated room you know what i mean and mm. um it's you know that's how it is but um yeah you you learn you learn your speakers um you learn how they sound and how they you know how they translate and you also learn the room so that's two things at the same time your room and your speakers they, they're kind of fighting so but with reference tracks you kind of get an idea of how it sounds because like with the dreamworks movie that you did some uh some rescoring of a couple of pieces. Rescoring? Re re recording? How would yeah, you describe rescoring? Re rescoring. So um how did you use the reference of the originals and your decisions with remaking it with a more Latin kind of vibe? Well, let's start with Deliver Us. That was the first one. So Deliver Us, I wanted to do I had actually released it. Um a rescore, but the, the same way no no remix it was just the same way i got the score um and i had my friend play percussion the way it is in the movie and we just did like a rescore release i took it down after a few weeks because i just felt like why am i doing it why am i releasing something to try to imitate the same way no and i just took it down nobody knows i'm like i just took it down but then um you know how youtube always throws out related videos it's like it records what you're looking at and then they throw you some related videos so i found deliver us heavy metal version like metal version mm. i don't know how the, how the wording is but <laughs> i fell in love with it man i was like what this is awesome man so then i'm like i don't want to waste deliver us let me see something so i opened up logic and i added a few bass lines on parts that didn't interfere with the with the basses and the celli from the from, from the violin like you know from the from the strings family so i wanted to keep i wanted to make the percussion work with the score not the score work for the percussion because i feel like i wanted to keep it the way it was but i just wanted to add the the latin flavor and the piano the latin piano and the bass you know and the latin bass so i put up the metronome a bit faster added a latin clave and i send it to my friend i did a sequence there with the fake percussion i say hey his name is caliche i say hey caliche what what do you think about this he's like well, wow this is definitely this is definitely different you know because latin music you have your straight you know your you know what i mean i don't i don't know if you listen to to if they have restaurants that play live music out there, but I'm sure you've heard cow cowbell playing and and you know, a few, uh, Latin Mark Anthony stuff, um, and so anyway, so um, we we he said, hey, nothing is impossible, let's do it, and we did it. Um, the the main focus was to to have the percussion work with the original score. So, because I already, I already done it already. You know, I had the sheet music. I, I did all the parts, hmm. you know, the way it is. And I just wanted to make the percussion fit. And, you know, from there, we he did the percussion. He sent it back. I redid the piano. Um, I did a few tweaks, you know, adjusting the, the MIDI instruments because the, 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 the symphony part is virtual instruments. So I had to, like, move a few things because um, I don't know if you're aware with string libraries, they're not like on point. You gotta kind of move the MIDI sometimes because it's uh, not perfect. Yeah. Usually yep. the moendos, you know, they the violins they usually don't finish like you would do on the piano. So 
moving on a few things because the Latin music, what it does, it pushes the beat. It goes. So I had to like kind of tweak things around because I wanted to really keep the the essence the essence of the the score. Mm-hmm. And um, the plagues was planned more than deliver us because, like I said, deliver us was mainly made just to do a rescore like the original, you know. But um, after deliver us was mastered at Air Studios and it came back and I released it, everybody fell in love with it. It was great, a great, a great project. So. The plagues was a little hassle. It was a bit of a hustle there because I I didn't have access to a full score chart. Oh. I had a mix of translations <sighs> um, and some parts of the harmonies weren't matching. So I had, I had like a score here and another score interpreted two different things. And I'm like, wait a minute, this measure doesn't line up with this measure. So a lot of the parts are played by ear. It was it was wow. it was bad, man. It, it took me a while because I was getting exhausted. So you know, sitting here like trying to play stuff by ear. You know what? No, a lot of people don't do that a lot. The way I did it, like you know, stopping what we call rewind, play, rewind, play, or zoom, or what they still say rewind, right? Forward and then go back just to hear how the French horns were playing and what's important in that part. So it took me a little while. Um, and then um, for that one, Aliche from um, the percussionist, he he was a bit confused because it, it goes from like, a, you know, from whispers to like an aggressive part and then it goes down, dynamics go up and then it goes down, you know, the plagues, the song. So I'm like, listen, you know, let's figure, let's figure it out. You know, throw, throw in whatever rhythms work. Um, and at, you know, at the end, he did it, and um, we we made it happen. And um, and that's it. You know, the the whole goal was to just make make friends. You know, a lot the 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 Latin elements making friends with the score, but not compromising the score. You know, that was a big thing for me. I did not want to mess it up. Yeah, because uh, you know, especially if you put it online, people can let you know about it. <laughs> They're gonna let you know about it, you know. Um, I I enjoyed it. It was interesting because I, when you listen to the tone of the instruments on their own and you match it with the gravity of it, a lot of the music I've listened to has been a lot more chill than some of the stuff that was discussed in those scores. So for you to yeah. match the emotional tonality of it was really cool. Yeah, it, 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 you know, overall it was fun at, when everything was already settled. Once the percussions did his part, it was fun. It was more fun because, you know, I didn't have to worry about nothing else, about nothing about adding anymore, you know, or adding instruments or anything like that. So from the percussion, we went to the voices and to the background voices, which was a huge, a huge project. And then um, sending it to London, to Jake, to, to mix it. Um, and you know what's the cool thing about this song? Well, the whole movie that Jake Jackson um the the mixing engineer the prince of egypt was if it's not the first movie or it it was one of the first movie that he was a part of so he was basically a rookie i think he was a rookie when that movie was was when that movie was being worked on wow he he sent me a message he was like hey you know that uh, Prince of Prince of uh, the Prince of Egypt was one of my beginnings. You know, it wasn't he wasn't the main engineer, but he was in the staff. You know, and I'm like, wow, that's that's incredible, man. So I was like, try to make it sound like it. <laughs> so we were just laughing. I was like, just make it sound like the movie as much as you can. Um, and um, he did a great job. You know, um, what I really liked about it is that. Typically, like Latinos work with Latinos, you know, for the genre of music, you know how it is. A rock, a rock player will get a rock and rock, en- rock music engineer that understands the style. Mm. I I went I went the opposite way, you know. Jake Jackson is not known to to uh, mix Latin music. He's known for film music mixing and um and other styles, but not Latin. I'm like Jake, let's just let's just go, man. Mm. Let's just let's just go. Do do you? He sends me, you know, a mix, um, a few little things to be tweaked, just like in any other production, you know. 
always give notes, but he did an excellent job at the final delivery. And um, I'm, I was pretty excited to have him on board. And then um, with the other engineer, with Luke in LA ma mastering it, he added some, um, you know, whatever he does out there with the mastering. It was it was fun. That's fantastic. Do you think you'll do more of this stuff in future, like more movie scores or? Well, I'll, you'll be the first one to know. Um, I'm waiting for a license to do one. It's not about, it's not in the movie um, because everything else in the movie is time signature wise is, is, is crazy. Um, so I can't really put Latin music on like a six, four count, you know, um, you know, D deliver us had a lot of three counts. Like it was a section where and, uh, there was a, if you look at the D deliver us track, the original it's about six minutes and 30 seconds long. Mm. It's like a whole score. But I couldn't keep it for the Latin version because the the percussion wasn't going to play in a lot of parts. So I'm like, well, let me just remove this part. Let me just shorten it up so that it doesn't become so boring. Um, and then, um, but I do regret doing that. So next time I do something, uh, I'm going to respect the whole score and just play the whole uh... 11 minutes. <laughs> but yes, going back to if I'm doing it, if I'm doing another one, yes, there is there is a a religious organization here not here but in in uh, philadelphia mm -hmm. um they do uh bible story plays they're they're called sight and sound um i'm not sure if they have theaters outside of the country but they're huge here <laughs> so they did a play about david and goliath and it's and this the 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 soundtrack there, they they promoted that it it's one of their best soundtracks, and we went to see it me and my family, and I gotta say, it's the truth, it is the truth. There is one song, many songs that they have like twenty three tracks, but there is one song that is is King Saul, that he's he's upset because he helped David, you know. Um, you know, when David defeated Goliath and mm -hmm. he became like the right hand for King Saul, um, <clears throat> he was complaining like, oh, this guy's trying to take my crown, you know, this and that. So it's a sound, it's a, it's the song is called um, anything to keep, anything to keep this crown. Okay. So he's, it's, the melody is beautiful, man. So it's basically new. So the, the, the people from the easy, I think it's called Easy Song Licensing. <clears throat> um, they told me, hey, they're, they're, they're telling me to get back to me. But since it's a, since it's a new song, um, I don't want to work on it yet until I could get the, the license. Mm -hmm. But that's the next one that I want to do. You know what I mean? So it, it's about King Saul. That's great. In my, yeah, in the Latin Symphony um, list. And yeah. like, do, do you like, do you see yourself doing this kind of thing long term? Or do you have other sort of ambitions music wise as well? Well, I'm, I'm involved in, in, in a few things like film scoring um, with with uh, for for short films. So um, right now there's a short film called uh, Rupture. It's based in London. So we just re they just released an official soundtrack. I mean, they released an official trailer also with the official soundtrack that i composed for the trailer it's called clash uh, so it's a lot of soundscapes sound designs and all that stuff um and you know um i believe for this year i did like three i worked on three short films so um with film directors and stuff like that and also other soundtracks bespoke soundtracks for music publishers that they need certain types of soundtracks they will send me a brief and then I would do like a hundred revisions until they're happy, you know, stuff like that. So um, my ultimate goal is to be successful in whatever I do. Um, cool. And with these Latin symphony arrangements, I would love to to play them live one day with hmm. a full orchestra. You know, it would be great to do that. Um, it's not possible at the moment, but I, I would love to do that sometime in the future. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. I'm, so yeah, I'm all over the place. <laughs> That's okay. It sounds like an organized all over the place, though. To be fair, yeah, I I try to keep things organized, um, put things in schedule. Um, you know, I have my piano students, 
that are, you know, I'm teaching them um, sometimes at night during the day. And then um, here, the good thing of having, the good thing of being involved in so many projects is that I, it's all done here. Hmm. So it's not that I have to pick up and go 30 minutes away or 40 minutes away to another studio or something that, you know, I, it, I try to avoid that as much possible. And the people that I work with is basically all remote. So I don't really work with a lot of people here in my own state. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just a decision that I, I feel better working with people outside. No, absolutely. You, I mean, I, I suppose uh, a couple more questions before we go, because um, I know it's getting late for you. Um, okay. Like... 834 <laughs> Eastern Standard Time, PM. For you, how do you find the right people? Trial, trial and error. Um, you know, um, I'm the type of person that likes to give opportunities um, because I didn't get many opportunities when I was younger. So I'm that type of guy that if I see you enjoy doing something and you're good at it, I will incorporate you. You know what I mean? Um, I will try you out. And if you're good, then we'll keep working. Um, you know, um, and reputation also like you see people on instagram you know doing their thing so you already know they're good you know and then that's a good you know it's a good introduction because you've seen their work they've seen your work and instagram is a great place between that and youtube you see these perform the guys performing their instruments and you know it's not like like the way it was before you know um so try and ever because if you if you're impressed with someone on Instagram and you want to try them out on your record, just because they're great on Instagram doesn't mean that they're great for your record, you mm. know. So that's where the revisions come in, you know. And and um, so I think that um, if a musician is open to make changes, that's what makes them great, you know. Um, in the film industry, in the film. Um, it's not like the modern recording. So in the modern recording, I could tell you, hey, I'm a, you want me to do a piano track? You only get, you know, one revision. So in the film industry, you can't say that because you'll get fired. Not because they don't like you. It's because they want their, they want the score to fit the picture. So when you're working, when you're working with picture, it's about the picture, not about the music. So, you know, that's what a lot of people don't understand that. And then they just get mad. I, I don't get mad. I have one going up to 10 revisions and I did it happily because it's a picture you're writing to. It's not, you know, a sound recording. It's not, you know, a modern recording. So, but yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, like, do you have a favorite experience you've had over the years with, with similar situations? Like what's your favorite thing you've done that you've released? Well, the, the soundtrack clash, I really enjoy doing the soundtrack clash. I don't know if you heard it. Um, what what the the film director wanted was something like a Blade Runner, um, you know the movie Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. So, luckily for lucky luckily for him, I have plugins that sound libraries that are close to that. So what we had to do was just um pick the the right sounds, the the right metal sounds, the sound designs, and add some delay, add some reverb, and just, it wasn't so much, there was only one melody, so it's just, duh, stuff like that, just like five notes, but everything around it had to be sound design, um, so I used um, the Zebra plugin, I don't know if you ever heard the Zebra plugin. I haven't, um, is it good? <laughs> well, for that, for sound designs, yeah, for, for like sounds, you know, for like, um, um, the, um, synthesizer stuff like that. So um, it's it's a, a very popular a very popular plugin that Hans Zimmer uses um, for his his scoring, and um, he also has some presets there that a lot of people don't know. Um, it's called Dark Zebra. So whoever's listening, get the Dark Zebra. So Dark <laughs> Zebra has presets from the movie Dark Knight. That's enough. <laughs> Whoa! So if, you like the movie Dark, if you if you like the movie Dark Knight and you like those sounds, if you like those type of sounds, get the zebra. Get and then there's the dark zebra. 
that's a it's a preset of sounds from the Dark Knight movie. So you have like crazy sounds. Oh, dude! Those are the sounds that we actually, yeah, those are the sounds that you'll hear in Clash soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, yeah, it's it's awesome, man. You know, and that's what uh, and that's what I'm talking about. These are sounds that were made, you know, and available to to many people that that need to do stuff like that that that's thank you for your advice i will actually go check it out after the interview because i'm very curious now what advice would you give people who are watching this who see someone who's done well with like scoring and sound design and all that what, what advice would you give them about where to get started or how to proceed just just do just do music um in my path i went from you know uh, becoming a drummer percussion and then what what what's good about life is that you learn all these experiences and then you apply it to the new things that you get into um so you know and it's it's really hard to judge when to quit on something but the good thing about music is that music is a huge universe it's like you can't you can't go wrong it's difficult to give up on music you know um as a as a latin musician one wants to become big in the latin industry but then as you get older and you get mature you start to understand music is all over the place. You know, why am I going to stay stuck here when I could apply? Like, like, let's say like the Latin symphony. I love soundtracks. I love the movie. Let me grab two songs, two songs, three songs. Let me apply the Latin thing. So what happens? You get a cinematic Latin soundtrack, which now I just finished doing a cinematic Latin album for um a, a music publisher called squirky they're based in london too so they're soon to release that cinematic latin album for i guess for the for the for the media world um but let me tell you uh two two or three years before if i would have been stuck here dreading this thinking that hey this is the only thing that music could have could offer me and i'm and and i feel stuck if I never made, you know, the the the, init the initiative step to break through that and say, you know what, music world, come to me, and you know, doing sound designs and and getting into new new relationships with people musically, learning. Um, and like I told you, my favorite thing, my favorite thing to do is hear audio engineers, what they do with the plugins, how can they do this me opening up a, a, an instrument track and adding a sound and just comp and writing just writing music so it, it's all uh, what i would say is just just do what you want to do you know learn and evaluate yourself you know um failing is always there it, it, you're always going to fail but you you're also going to win too so to win you got to fail you know you got to trip sometimes you got to learn you got to ask questions and don't give up or anything and you know what the good thing about today is that you could have a studio today <laughs> you know you could have a studio today you know what i'm saying it, so it's not impossible it's not hard it's not difficult at all a high school student can can go work at wendy's or something and um or a restaurant work on saving up a little bit of money and, and start off with you know um, a simple audio interface get yourself a you know a base model Mac or window machine, plug it in, get a little controller and make music. So just do it. I don't have an, I don't have a secret sauce to that, to, to, to being successful because, um, I'm still on my journey and whatever I've accomplished is a moment of celebration, but it's not where I stop, you know? So where I was 10 years ago, where I'm at now is a huge difference because I'm looking at music differently. So that's one of the things that then I would tell people. So, you know, don't get stuck in one genre, you know, maybe apply what you like, spread it out. You know, um, I have a video of um, how, how to do film music. And basically what I said was, you know, if you, if you like a certain style of music, just incorporate that to violins, strings, brass, woodwinds. You know, if you like rock music, add percussion orchestral percussion and the guitar leads let the violins do that you know things like that you know what i mean mm. um whatever the voices might be doing let the choir do that and you'll have yourself you have yourself a film score there Automatically. Uh, that's eye-opening so, man yeah i mean it's it's 
the will the the willing to the you gotta have the intention to um to succeed and build relationships and and get with the right people and sometimes it requires you to unfollow many people that you have on instagram already and make room for new people and that's what i did man i literally unfollowed everybody that was in my list for maybe the past five years and I, was, and I said you know what i need something new and, and i went ahead and i just did it i i unfollowed many people man so it's also here that's why you did that that's why i do that because it's up here you know i don't want to wake up in the morning and see the same the same thing you know i want to see inspiration i want to see growth you know i need to be motivated every day so it's like you know they say you gotta be you gotta have new motivation every day because it's not like you bathe once a week you got you bathe every day hopefully you know <laughs> that's like motivation you gotta have new motivation every day <laughs> Hello, Anthony. It was fantastic to chat to you today. But before we go, and thank you for your advice as well. I'm just kind of absorbing all of it. I'm going to be thinking about it after this interview. Um, where can people find more about you and your music? Uh, my official website is anthonyrodriguezonline.com. So from there, I believe all the information from social media to uh, new music that's out you can you can browse through the website and and um whatever attracts your eye you know like you said i wear many hats so i can be a composer i can be a producer i could be a pianist i could be a teacher so whatever whatever catches your eye if if someone wants to you know take lessons in music and you know this it's all it's all there on the website if they want you know um if they have a project they want to record or anything like that you know the contact us page is right there as awesome, man. Look, it has been fantastic to chat to you. Appreciate the time and learning more about you. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed it too, and I hope that you have a fantastic day and the best of luck in future. You too, man. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. Hey, you too. See you later. So this is future Logan here after having recorded this interview with Anthony Rodriguez. I really enjoyed my time with Anthony. Um, he's a fantastic individual, great human being. Um, I learned a lot from him both in regards to his composition, his film scoring, and also the audio production stuff was absolutely splendid. If you did enjoy hearing to Anthony and his, and you know, if you enjoyed listening to his story, please do go check out his various social medias. And uh, I'll put links to his website and stuff here, as well as in the description of this video. And stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as either how more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on. And uh, yeah. I just want to say before I go that I've really enjoyed doing these interviews with artists and musicians from around the world now. Um, there's been like 34 of these or something like that, which is absolutely mind-blowing. And I look forward to doing more in future. And I'll catch you in the next interview. Spot hands up.